Hey everyone, my name's John. I'm going to do the Mr. Robot box on Vulnhub. Vulnhub is basically a website where you can download vulnerable machines and attack them. So if you want to follow along, just go to that website, download the Mr. Robot box, get your Kali Linux booted up and, well, let's get cracking. So the first thing we need to do is establish what our IP address is. And the way we'll do that is open up opening up a terminal and we'll do ifconfig. Right, as you can see our IP address is 192.168.56102 and we've got a netmask of 255.255.255.0. Now, if you're familiar with networking, you'll realise that is a slash 24 on the zero network, so we'll do a net discover. Tag R for the range 192.168.56.0 slash 24 and this is essentially going to run an ARP scan which is address resolution protocol which resolves uh, MAC addresses to IP addresses and it's kind of useful for doing host discovery on the local network so as you can see here we've got 192.168.56101 that's going to be your target address and we'll control C that so the first thing to do is do an nmap scan to find out some information about the host we'll do nmap SC for default scripts, SV for enumerate versions, TAC O for OS detection. We'll do version intensity 5 and we'll go with full verbosity on 192.168.56101. This is essentially just going to give us some information about the host to realise what kind of attack vectors we have. Oh, do you know what? Interrupt that. Change that. So, we'll see how this goes. As an aside, just so you know, full disclosure, that I've done this box before and I'll be taking some shortcuts in the interest of keeping the video remotely watchable, we'll see how that turns out. Um, so sometimes I will go ahead and if you want to dig down some rabbit holes which I kind of skip over, by all means go ahead and do so. Right. So, let's full screen that. As you can see, Nmap's dumped a lot of information on us. The crucial information here is we've got port 80 open, which is HTTP. We've also got port 443, which is, again, is HTTPS or TLS traffic. And when I get that, the first thing I like to do is to browse to the website, because we've got port 80 open, we've got a web server, which means we can we've got web access. So let's do that. Let's open up Firefox and go to that website. One nine two dot one six eight dot five six one zero one. You can see I've already been here before. And what happens is we get a website which is loaded. It's actually quite interactive and well designed as far as these vulnerable machines go. Uh, usually they're kind of bland and boring, but this guy's actually put it in theme with the show, Mister Robot. So if you know the show, you'll recognise the kind of well the whole feel of it. Okay, hello friend, if you've come, you've come for a reason, blah de blah, this is all familiar. And we've got some commands we can put in, prepare, F society, inform, question, wake up and join. So, what we're going to do is pop in prepare. And essentially what this does is it prompts us to watch a video. Now, again, if you want to watch this, by all means go and do so. What I'm going to do is uh, close that down and open up. Because we've got port, port 80 open, what we're going to do is run a Nikto scan. Nikto is essentially a vulnerability scanner and we'll test for vulnerabilities on the website. So what we'll do is do Nikto tag H for the host 192.168.56101. Now automatically Nikto will run on port 80, that's the default. However, if you want to change that, you can do tag P and put in say for example TLS traffic HTTPS port 443, that would be in this case though, the default is fine, we're looking for port 80, so we're just going to leave that. So let that run on that and see how we go. Do you know what? See, in the interest of being expedient, let's just go ahead. Whilst that's running, I'm going to run a derp 
Derb essentially will find directories on the website by running a common word list against them and just kind of almost like a dictionary attack. It just keeps uh, using like forward slash admin, these kind of familiar paths. It will use all them. So actually, let's do that. HTTP hyphen, there we go. And this is just going to do a word list. See, the word list it's using is user slash share slash derp slash word list slash common dot txt. And we'll let that run. Right, so immediately what you can see here from the vulnerability scan, we've got an interesting thing straight away sticking out. Forward slash robots dot txt. When you see that, when you do a vulnerability scan and see something to do with robots, it's usually a good idea to go and check that out. So that's what we're going to do straight away. We'll interrupt this and we'll do robots.txt. Right. It appears we've already got the first key, key one of three. And we've got something called F Socrates. What we're going to do is to W get them. Scroll down here, W get 192.168.56101 and that was robots oh, text. <laughs> robots.txt. Okay, we'll cat that, robots.txt, and we'll do W get 192.168.56101 key one of three dot txt. I'm gonna cat that. Right, that's the first key, that whole that big string of numbers and letters, that's the first key we're after. However, we've also got um, this little F socket here. Notice it doesn't say F society, it's obviously been a misspelling, kind of annoying, but we'll get it anyway. So, wget192.168.56101, F socket dot dick. And we're going to cat that. This is a very long word list. What I'm going to do is just interrupt it. And we'll do a word count on that. WCL. And as you can see here, we have got 858,160 words, which is a hell of a lot. Once you get these kind of word lists on, on these kind of capture the flag events or tasks, what you tend to do with them is use them for brute forcing and dictionary attacks. That's usually why they're there. But in this case, we've got one for 800,000 odd words. That's going to take a hell of a long time. Let's see if we can get that list a bit shorter. So, the way to do that is there is a possibility that there is a large volume of duplicate words in that, that uh, word list. So what we're going to do is try to sort out the unique words. So the way to do that is to sort Tag U for unique F socket and we're going to put that into new sock dot text. Okay, we'll word count that now on new sock. Right. Just by getting the unique words, we've greatly reduced this word list to one uh, eleven thousand four hundred and fifty one words. That's way, way, way better. So we can use that. Okay. First off, just as a little aside, see if you want. Um, with the vulnerability analysis, we've got Nikto, and you can use stuff like OWASP, Zap. If you like graphical user interfaces, OWASP is good. You can also use Sparta. I'll just show you that briefly. Right, so as you can see, we've got Sparta here. I tend to find Sparta is a little bit aggressive. It kind of automates too many tasks at once. And I think it's a better idea to be a little bit more picky and choosy with what you do. So, anyway, it's still good. We'll use it. We'll add that to the host. We'll do an Nmap scan with host discovery, stage scan. And this will just start running processes. Um, if you let this run, you will see that it'll do the Nikto scan, it'll do screenshots and so on and so forth, plenty of other things. We'll close that down just now though. 
Um, so we'll go back to the website. Uh, what addresses do we had? Let's have a look. What did Derp find? Hmm. <laughs> right, Derp is going through these directories. Now, see this one here. This is going to be important for a point I'm going to make on WP scan in a minute. So just remember that one. That was the first directory we found. But a good um. Good practice is to check these sites out. So we'll we'll browse to this one. We'll do the forward slash admin and see what we get. And what you notice, it just keeps con uh, connecting. It's continually spinning the web page. So we'll just shut that down. Um, and that essentially goes nowhere. That's what that one does. But. Another good thing to do is general good practice is to I'll watch, I'll show you. 192.168.56101 is to kind of prompt for an error message on the website to see if you can get anything underneath the site. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll just type in some gibberish here. And you can see actually that page can't be found apparently, but underneath the website we have a WordPress site. Now if anyone is familiar with using Kali Linux, when you see a WordPress site you tend to think of WP Scan, and that's what I'm thinking of straight away. So we'll have a wee look at this web page first. And what you'll notice is we've got a login down here. So let's click to that and we'll see. Mm -hmm. So we've got this login page, and what I'm going to do is run a WP scan on it. Control that. Do you know what? Let's shut Sparta down. I'll briefly show you what it was finding. So for example here, you've got the Nikto scan. It tells you some information t that finds the robots.txt that I was talking about. It'll screenshot it. Now this is actually an interactive website, so the screenshot isn't very good in this case. It's just showing you the cursor. If it was a normal static web page, you'd see all the text, but in this case, it's not. So, Sparta is just going to continue doing these scans. Like, for example, it's doing a staged MMAP scan, getting more and more in-depth as it goes along. But I'm going to stop that just now. So, if you want to use Sparta, by all means, go ahead and do so. Uh, where are we? Right. So, we've got a WordPress website. We've identified that. A good, good practice generally is to use WP scan. So we'll do WP scan and we will do URL 192.168.56101 and we'll do enumerate you. Watch this though, this isn't going to work. See that? Enumerating usernames, we did not enumerate any usernames. So what went wrong? You won't get anything back unless, remember this derb I was talking about, the very first directory we found? See if you run WP scan against that directory, the slash zero directory, you might get something different. So we'll try that now. We'll full screen that. WP scan, and we'll do URL 192.168.56101 slash zero and we will enumerate you
Right, so as you can see, this time we actually got something. We got a login for ID5, which is Mick05654, however you say that. And that belongs to Chris the God. And here we've got ID6, which belongs to Elliot. The name is Elliot Alders, which is Elliot Alderson. Now, if you're familiar with the show Mr. Robot, you'll probably recognise that name, Elliot. He's the lead protagonist. And I think because of that, it would make sense to use that name first as a login. So, we would use that, but in the event, let's say you couldn't get WP Scan to work, or you didn't want it to work, or rather, well, you didn't want to use it, you'd rather would use something else. Another way to do so would be to use Hydra. Now, Hydra is a tool which you can use to brute force, and I'll show you that just now. Now, see, before we do that, we'll create a word list, again, because we're trying to save on time. So what we'll do, we'll cat a word list and we'll call this word list what small log dot txt and we'll just put in some gibberish. Uh, whatever. This is the one we want, Elliot. And we'll just continue on with that. Right, that'll do just now. So we'll control D that. And LS. We'll cat that. Small. Is that done right? Oh, wait, then. Two seconds. Control that. Close you. Oh, wait, no, that's what I've done. I made a mistake there. Remove small log. Do that again. Cat. Small log dot txt. Next, I'd put those characters in there when I was just mashing the keypad. <laughs> um, right, just put some actual names in. John, Ryan, Elliot, which is the one we're after and more gibberish. That'll do, control D that. LS, cat, small log, that's a bit better. Okay, so we'll exit out of that. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to use two tools. We're gonna to use Hydra and an intercept tool called Burp Suite. So essentially, Burp Suite will be configured as a proxy to catch the request as it goes to the website. And from that, we'll be able to see um, kind of in-depth how the website handles the request. And from that, we can kind of extract out the syntax we need to construct our Hydra dictionary attack. So that's what we're going to do. But what first off, what I'm going to do is stop this video just now. This will be part one, and I'll return with part two um, in a wee moment. So just hang tight. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> 